I decided to go to Hungary, the country in Central Europe that was once dominated by the Nazis and then the Soviets, because I want to find the truth about the country. It's a small country, just 10 million people. And because the language is really inscrutable to most people, we don't really know what's going on other than through the lens of major mainstream media, like, say, the New York Times or the Washington Post. It's just not a beat covered by smaller or independent players. But I sense something was wrong because... Hungary and its Prime Minister Viktor Orban are denounced and attacked by the mainstream media in the way that conservatives in the West are denounced and attacked. But at least in that case, there is the other side of the story being told. Not so much with Hungary. And so we decided to tell the other side of the story. And we went to Hungary and we set up a special website called thetruthabouthungary.com. One of the truths we learned is that not all Hungarians are in Hungary proper because the country was chopped up in an international treaty about 100 years ago. And there are many ethnic Hungarians in other countries, over 100,000 in neighboring Ukraine, for example, quite a few here in Romania, which is another country that borders Hungary. And uh, in fact, I'm here in uh, Tushnad, if I'm pronouncing it right, uh, because there is a ethnic Hungarian festival that attracts Hungarians from all over Romania. And in fact, it's treated as a kind of outpost by Hungarian political leaders. Orban himself will speak here tomorrow. Uh, it's a fascinating mix. I won't uh, describe it again, again to you because I did another video on it. It's part cultural festival, part food and music festival, part political conference. And funny enough, I was invited to sit on a panel discussion about the media in 2023. Now, I know a lot about the media in Canada, but I know very little about the media in Hungary, other than I saw some other journalists here at the conference, including a state broadcaster, which tells me that perhaps uh, the Hungarian state broadcaster is not quite as left-wing as it is in Canada. Anyways, I'm going to show you uh, my contributions on the panel discussion um, I just gave a, a few remarks and they were well received. And I and I talked uh, with a Hungarian MP who was on the panel. So I gave some of my thoughts. Some of it was a report on how we're doing in Canada and some of some advice for Hungary and, and how they should approach a media that is, there's a domestic Hungarian media, but then there's a massive foreign funded attack media, the funding either from Soros or believe it or not, the US government. All right. Here are my comments to a panel at the Tushvanyos Hungarian Conference here in Romania. Thanks very much. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I, I'm Ezra Levan. I'm from Canada. Some of you may have heard of our uh, website called rebelnews.com. We're based in Canada. We also have a strong reporter in Australia, and we've done work from the UK, the United States, and occasionally we go on adventures like we're doing right now in Hungary and Romania, the Netherlands, uh, really anywhere around the world. And um, our name, Rebel News, suggests that we're outside the establishment. But we're not just outside the political and media establishment. For example, our staff do not have journalism degrees. We call it citizen journalism. And so they may not have some of the professional polish, but what they lack is in professional credentials they have in authenticity. And and I think that shows through. And I think in this day and age of cynicism, people can respect a citizen journalist even more than a professional journalist, especially if they understand who funds it. I think that these days, a lot of journalists are actually activists. They're very politicized. I understand recently the United States has sent $25 million to Hungary to prop up critical journalists on a mission, really, to attack the government. And I think the source of funding is an essential part of their identity. One of the, the challenges of being a citizen journalist is that it's hard. The average donation to Rebel News is $58 Canadian. But we're able to support a staff of 47 people through lots and lots of $58 donations. And while that means we're always asking our viewers for support and some of them get irritated, it's essential for that trust. In Canada, you may have heard a few uh, a year ago that in 
protest to the vaccine mandate and the lockdowns, there was a giant convoy of trucks that came to Ottawa. Thousands of truckers. It was a grassroots leaderless movement. All of the media condemned it as radical, racist. Uh, they even said it was violent. But our citizen journalists went out with just their little cell phones and filmed what was happening on the streets. And we had hundreds of millions of views. And and really, anyone who could hold a camera of all their phone as a journalist. And that's uh, so we were rebelling against the journalistic establishment and the credentialization of media. We were rebelling against the technology of media. If you have a cell phone, you are a journalist. Sure, you can upgrade a little bit, but you don't need to. In fact, the the rough quality of your work shows that you're authentic. I believe that everyone is a pundit. Everyone has a political point of view, but it's very valuable to be on the ground with a camera filming what actually happens. That's the first link in the food chain for the pundits to talk over. So, for example, my colleague Lincoln and I, we set up a special crowdfunding website, thetruthabouthungary.com. And we said, we're going to go to Hungary and tell the story that the mainstream media doesn't tell. If you think that's important, please chip in. So we, we try and monetize every cost we have. Um, let me, I don't want to take up too much time because I don't know how long you've set aside for opening remarks. Um, okay. Um, it's fascinating to me to learn about Hungary because it's difficult. Hungarian is a very difficult language for people in the in North America to learn. It, it doesn't feel similar to French, Italian, Spanish. And so it's that makes it hard to understand. Hungary is a small uh, nation in terms of population, unlike Irish Americans or Italian Americans or Jews. That it's not a very large and expat community in North America. In fact, the most prominent Hungarian. It, it overseas is George Soros, who has a very particular point of view. And so the combination of the language barrier, the lack of Western expat champions for Hungary, makes it difficult to get primary information. I think that's why people were excited in North America to crowdfund our little journey, just as an example. Um, and then you have the layer of... what And so... There's criticism of Hungary in the Western media, but it's hard to double check it. It's hard to validate or verify it because, again, of these barriers. What's interesting is that one of the calumnies, one of the accusations against Hungary is that it's authoritarian, that it doesn't respect civil rights, including political dissent. That's fascinating to me. I have seen no evidence of that. In fact, I've seen the opposite, and I've seen the undermining but the State Department funding of critical journalists is, is shocking. And I did the math. If he took $25 million for a country of 10 million people, imagine if Sridharj had sent the same proportion to America. That would be $750 million just to journalists in America to dig up dirt on Biden. That would be a shocking, not only a violation of national sovereignty, but in a way, that's undermining the free press because it's a kind of um, false journalist. If you are a journalist with a particular political agenda paid by a foreign power, you're not actually a journalist. You dress like a journalist, you walk and talk like a journalist, but it's a kind of drag. You're a drag queen journalist in a way. And so I, I think that comes down to, so it's fascinating that they accuse Hungary of being authoritarian. I don't see it. But they use tactics against Hungary that I think are, are sketchy. My prime minister in Canada, Justin Trudeau, holds himself out to be a champion of civil liberties. But he invoked a form of martial law to repel the trucker convoy. This convoy I mentioned of all the trucks. He brought in a kind of martial law called the Emergencies Act. He jailed activists, peaceful activists, for weeks. He seized hundreds of personal bank accounts without legal process. That sounds authoritarian. And the temerity of him to criticize 
Hungary is shocking to me. <laughs> Um, but let me tell you what it's like in closing to be a kind of rebel journalist in Canada. Because I understand here in Hungary, the media is fairly balanced, critics and supporters. I understand that, that the state broadcaster is here to cover this event, which suggests they're open-minded. But Viktor Orban's not going to live forever. And one day, Fidesz will not be in power. That may seem unthinkable to you now. But one day, you will be the opposition, the critics, the contrarians. And so these levers of the state, the state broadcaster and other institutions, may fall into the hands of people who do strangle breast for you. In my country of Canada, Trudeau is gradually encroaching on the media. He's colonizing them by giving them government payments, which makes them less likely to criticize him. And he's starting to bring in a system of licensing called the Qualified Canadian Journalism Organization. It's a license. You have to apply to the government for a form of license. And if you don't get it, you lack certain civil liberties. And obviously, Rebel News applied and we were rejected. It's, it's shocking to me that Canada would criticize Hungary when that's what we're doing back home. But if I had one message or lesson for Hungary... And for those who care about the media and who understand how the media is so deeply linked to politics, it would be this. Prepare now for when you are in the wilderness, for when you are exiled from political power. Prepare now for when you no longer have some of the access and financing you may have. And we had to build our company in a very difficult way because we were censored and silenced by advertisers. We were deplatformed. We were canceled because we were supportive of Donald Trump, for example, but not even over the top. We just showed what he said. YouTube turned off their ads, costing us more than a million dollars a year. Then they, we were critical of vaccine mandates. So then YouTube turned off something called Super Chats, which is like a donation that costs us another four hundred thousand dollars a year so how did we survive when we were blacklisted and cut off and censored the, the necessity is the mother of invention as they say and if i had one piece of advice for hungarians who want their own voices told who want to tell their own stories whether it's culturally or politically as we do it would be this Build a direct connection with your viewers. And I believe the crowdfunding model, which we have built by necessity, is a life raft that you will need when they finally sink your battleship. And there is nothing that our enemies can do to stop us because we have a direct connection with actually more than 1 million people. We have 4 million people in our database. 1 million active users of our emails that we send emails to, and hundreds of thousands of individual gifts, average size $58. So there's no boss who can phone me up and say, kill that story on, we did a story on George Soros the other day. We did a story on the House of Terror Museum, and we spoke very bluntly about the communists. But there's no one who can call me up and say, kill that story, fire that person, because we have no single person who gives us more than 1% of our money. And so using the tools that are almost free, like I don't know what they're called in Hungary, but where I come from, there's a lot of different mail services, constant contact, MailChimp. There's, there's different services that you can use to build up a list. But let me give you one key part of that. You must own your own data. You must have those names because you want to be able to survive the cancellation that comes to you when you when you offend a power that be. Let me, let me close with an example of that. Uh, one day, PayPal cut us off. We did millions of dollars of donations through PayPal. We were a preferred customer. And then one day they shut us down. You know, we had to, we had all our data, we had the names of our customers, and we had to move to another credit card processor. 
prepare now for when that happens. I know I'm sounding apocalyptic. I'm sounding defensive and I'm sounding like I am in a battle. In Canada, I am. It's ironic that I'm here in Hungary or Romania, a place with freedom of the press, and I'm coming from a a country that holds itself out to be civil rights oriented, and yet at home I'm censored. But my message to you would be, you, each of you can be a journalist. If you have a phone and a social media account, that's the start of it. And then if you capture the names and email addresses of your supporters, just ask for it. Have a petition to build it up. And if you do that, over the course of time, you will eventually rival what I call the legacy media or the regime media. And all the things that, that they will that they will chastise you for, that you're just a citizen, you're not a professional, that you just use your cell phone and not a fancy camera, that you ask for donations. Those are the things that make you strong in the, and in the long term, stronger than men. So in closing, let me just look at my notes. I, I would say Hungary, despite what the foreign critics say, is actually a wonderful place to be a journalist today. I fear that that won't always be the case because the forces that Hungary is up against are actually forces of censorship and they're trying to censor and cancel Hungary itself. They're trying to censor, censor and cancel your prime minister. If they would do that to your prime minister, they would do that to you. But you can build your grassroots systems hardened for the battle to come because it is a battle of ideas. And in Hungary's case, it's a battle for your very identity. Thank you for including me. And I look forward to learning more about Hungary because that's what I'm here to do. Thanks for including me on the panel. <music>